working. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time now at a, a lot of different places and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what is it that keeps you coming back, Coach? What is it about the game and coaching football? And, and what do you think about when you think about just keeping your passion for this, uh, this profession? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, <clears throat> what I realized is the other day we put our team on Zoom and we had one of these Zoom meetings and you realize that that's what it is. That's what you miss. You miss the interaction with the players. You miss the interaction with your own staff. It, it just, all of those, uh, it's such a people game. And, you know, in, in today's day, right now, like they've eliminated that from us. And it's, it's tough. It really is. Like, you know, I love the fact that you guys are doing this and we're able to get on and chat and that. But, you know, it, it just sucks that we can't have that interaction this is a heavy recruiting time, you know, like I like getting out there and you're meeting the kids and the parents and talking to the coaches. And uh, it's such a social uh, component to the game that you're lost, that's lost right now. That's yeah, along there. those lines, coach, uh, you know, what drove you to getting into the game? What was, you know, what got you excited to coaching the game? You know, you went from a player uh, and then all of a sudden now you're a coach and did you always think you were going to want to get into coaching or? How did that sort of evolve for you? Well, I, you know, obviously I'm an X guy and I did my uh, phys ed degree at X. And, you know, I, I just thought I was going to stay involved in some type of sport, I guess. I just thought I was going to, my ultimate goal back then was I was going to be a high school teacher and coach a bunch of sports. And, and when I graduated and uh, my first sort of real phys ed job was at the Halifax Grammar School, and we had no football, so I didn't have – it still wasn't really on my radar. Um, I was coaching basketball and soccer and every other sport that you can think of at the at the time, and uh, it was John Stevens. Um, I ran into John at a golf tournament in Truro, and he said, you want to come down to, you know, be involved in training camp? and Man, when it grabs you, it grabs you hard. Oh, We're all God. sitting here for the same reason. Right? <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. I never would have – if you would have told me, you know, two years prior to that, that, you know, you're going to spend the rest of your, uh, you know, job days or whatever coaching football, I would have laughed and said no. I, uh, I had a funny conversation one day with Billy Ray Somerville about a year ago. Billy Ray, yes. And, and it was like, hey, did you ever think of all the people that you knew that were playing that I would be a guy that would be, you know, making his living coach? And like, I said, I still can't believe it. You know, yeah. like, Gary, you were good. Like, I was like, yeah, you know, I was a guy in the team, right? <laughs> well, listen, you you definitely – well, listen, your career, we'll get into some of that, but your career speaks volumes for the – you know, what you've been able to accomplish over the years. But I'm always interested in why coaches sort of get into that craft and, and what for leads sure. you. Know, it's interesting. You have different paths and sort of, you know, how you get there. But uh, once you get there, you're right about – 100% 100 right about it. It bites you. It grabs onto you, right? Oh, it – you know, it's – there was um, – <clears throat> when things kind of went south for me at St. Mary's, I, 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 this kind of a pathetically funny story. I, um, I a good friend of mine, she's a, a headhunter. So I went and talked to her and said, you know, is there anything, you know, any jobs or whatever, like I should be looking at? And, um, and she said, well, there's a salesperson looking to sell pipe. And I remember coming home talking to Amanda and saying, <clears throat> well, you know, and she just looked at me and went, are you an idiot? <laughs> You're not selling pipe. <laughs> like, you know, it, it was just not one of those. Not anything wrong with selling piping, right? Of course. Yeah, exactly. It just, <laughs> but, it, you know, I, what the hell do I know about selling pipe, right? Yeah, and yeah. it just, it became kind of that realization, like, I'm a lifer. Like, this is, this is what I do. And, and, you know, and the passion and love for it 